Hey guys, it's Michelle with Florida Keys Birding and welcome to 2023 Kite Flight. The first raptor to migrate, the 10,000 mile migration of the swallow-tailed kite. This raptor is easily distinguishable from other raptors with its forked tail and black and white color as it glides through the sky with the ease of a kite flying through the air. Migration is early both in spring and fall with birds, Florida birds arriving February to April and departing August to September, but some even start departing as early as late July. Some migrate around the Gulf of Mexico, but most Florida birds apparently cross the Caribbean. Swallowtail kites start congregating in tall slash pines and cypress trees and are on the move as early as July in central Florida, St. Lucie, and Martin County areas. Swallowtail kites range from southern areas of the U.S. during the breeding season, such as Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and of course, the entire state of Florida. They also breed in Central America and migrate through the Caribbean on their way down to South America as far as Brazil and Uruguay. The Avian Research and Conservation Institute has trackers on 20 swallowtail kites. So the first of the ARCI track kites to head south in 2023 is named Lucky Lux. Lucky Lux was tagged this year in June in Palm Beach County with the help from their partners at the ARCI uh, with the Palm Beach County Zoo and Conservation Society, as well as the Palm Beach County Environmental Resource Management Lands. They are currently waiting for DNA results to find out if Lucky Lox is a male or a female, but Lucky Lox is fitted with a GSM GPS unit made by CCT that relays locations back to them, like sending a text message through a cell phone tower network. After the breeding season in late June, Lucky Locks went to South Georgia to prepare for migration. Many kites go north before they leave the U.S. to take advantage of agricultural fields with swarms of insects they feed on to put weight on before flying across the Gulf of Mexico. Similar to other birds, they do the same thing. They, they you know, uh, load up on food and they store that those fat stores and then they get ready for that long migration and this one has especially quite a long migration 10,000 miles that's a long migration so uh, once uh, once once Lucky Lox was ready to head south um, this bird moved quickly through peninsular Florida spending the last night near Bonita Springs before soaring across the Florida Keys and landing east of Havana, Cuba on the 22nd of July. After two nights in Cuba, Lucky Lux made a direct crossing from Guanajacabibes Peninsula to south of Cancun, Mexico. For the last week or so, Lucky Lux has been stopping over in Mexico to find rest and feed in the tropical broadleaf forest of Quintana Roo. Some of the other kites that ARCI is tracking are Jega 1, 2, and 3, PBC, Palm Beach County, <laughs> ERM, male and female, Suwannee, Sawgrass, Lucky Locks, Pritchard, Sarasota, Panchitalawa Creek, Sanibel, and Apopka. There are a couple others that are outside of Florida, I believe, which would be Bayou Vincent, Jax, I'm assuming that's Jacksonville, so that it would be inside Florida, Babcock, Wilson, OK, Lacombe, and Hobolo Creek. So these are the birds that they're tracking right now, and you can see uh, a little diagram of what the tracking looks like here. So these birds are generally creatures of the air, spending most of their day aloft and, and rarely flapping their wings. They're just kind of gliding in the air. Like I said, like a kite. They're just kind of gliding through. They tend to circle fairly low over trees as they hunt for small animals and branches. At times they soar very high in the sky, almost at the limits of vision. And during migration, they may form large flocks. Look for swallowtail kites over swamps, marsh, marshes, and large rivers of the southeastern U.S., particularly in Florida. We do have a lot of them. At the end of summer, all the swallowtail kites in the U.S. leave and migrate south to South America. 
The kite's aerial acrobatics while on the hunt are something to see. It continually flicks and rotates its tail, switching from a straight course to a tight turn in an instant as it scans for prey. I have seen them do this. This is what they do. They kind of fly and they glide back and forth and then they do a, a quick turn and you're like, whoa, where did it go? <laughs> and then you lose them and it's hard to get a good picture. Adults swallow their food while they're flying and they rarely perch during the day. Though adult swallowtail kites eat mostly flying insects, they feed their young with many types of small vertebrates including tree frogs, lizards, nestling birds, and snakes. Less commonly, they also eat bats, small fish, and fruit. Stinging and biting insects such as wasps and ants form an important part of the species diet. Oh, yuck. I'm glad I don't have to eat those things. <laughs> <laughs> they snatch these animals from trees and other plants while in flight and carry them in their feet. Swallowtail kites hunt on the wing, gleaning prey and dis from deciduous trees, shrubs, and vegetation along rivers, lakes, ponds, marshes, and sloughs. So they're mostly like a freshwater, uh, you know, they're, they're mostly going to be found around freshwater versus like a saltwater, you know, ocean type bird. So to feed young nestlings, a male kite carries a prey item in one or both feet to the nest. In Florida, the kites often return to their nest with a whole wasp nest. Oh my gosh. Well, that's got to be interesting. I wonder how they don't get stung. I don't know. I would think that the wasps would like take over and just destroy them. I don't know how that, that works, but it says that they come with a whole wasp nest. They eat the larva and add the insect nest into their own nest. That is, that is interesting. So <laughs> there the male swallowtail kite will perch, transfer the food to his beak and pass it along to the female. She tears it up and feeds it to the young. So she's in the kitchen, she's cooking it up, she's tearing it to pieces, and then she's feeding it to her babies. <laughs> so, and the male, he goes out, he prays the provider, and he catches the food for her. It's awesome. There we go, men. Take a lesson from the swallowtail kites. Provide for your woman and children. <laughs> so, um, she tears up the food, gives it to the young, and adults typically consume their food while flying. I've seen them do this with something in their talons, and they're eating it, and they're picking at it, um, and they're eating it while they're while they're flying. I've even seen them eat iguanas. I know people don't like them, but I like them, and it's sad for me to see them eat iguanas, but they do. I've seen them do that. Um, so their stomachs are actually thicker and spongier than the average raptor stomach. So they're able to, uh, they're able to do this. They're able to eat a lot of different things. Multiple breeding pairs often nest in nearby trees and non-breeding birds will, um, may also hang around the area. They even carry food and nest materials to breeding females, but the females typically decline their gifts. Hmm. They're like, no, 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 mister. You've got to do better. <laughs> <laughs> in the Everglades, uh, I can tell you that there is one nest site that can be seen during the summer and in a late spring on Anhinga Trail. If you go towards the back of Anhinga Trail, kind of where the gators are congregating, you can see uh, in the cypress trees and in the big pines. No, it's not cypress. It's it's the pine. It's the pines, like slash pines. Um, you can see them if you're if you're looking uh, kind of more more north. You can if you look straight ahead. Uh, sometimes a guide will kind of show you where they are. But there's a um, a breeding colony nest over in that area that they come every year. So you can find them there if you're in the Everglades. Another place you can find them is if you're driving through St. Lucie County, Fort Pierce area on the Turnpike or on 95 in early july or late june you're almost guaranteed a sighting i drive up there every year for fourth of july to central florida and i'll tell you every single time i see at least three swallowtail kites soaring during the drive um, another place that you can find swallowtail kites um, and this is probably an even better place to look because according to Great Florida Birding Trails, they said Fish Eating Creek Wildlife Management in Glades County um, has as many as 2,000 swallowtail kites when they gather in late summer before heading south for the winter. I would say to look in that area probably mid to late June. 
I mean, not June, July, mid to late July. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. Or maybe even a little bit earlier in July, if you're going to be looking, looking in those areas, because that's usually around the time they start congregating and they do start moving as early as July. Um, this is the first week of August. So if they're pretty much almost, you know, there's still some there, but they're mostly leaving by now. So another place to view them in late July, uh, late June or early July um, is Highland Park Fish Camp and it's closest access by the water to one of the largest roosts of swallowtail kites in Florida. Take a four mile boat trip to their nesting area to witness hundreds of these beautiful birds in action. So these are some places that you can go if you're wanting to view swallowtail kites roosting um, or soaring or something like that. I usually do get to see them every every year, even in my area in Key Largo. So as far as conservation goes, they're not a concern, but we can support them by planting trees and keeping their habitat intact because the kite's primary threat is habitat loss from agriculture, urban development, logging, and other landscape altering factors. Roosting kites are also vulnerable to disturbance from low flying aircrafts. So as with any bird and with any animal, you're gonna wanna do this. You're gonna wanna plant trees if all the trees were cut down to build your house. Um, you know, plant the trees back, bring them back, and um, you know, be a part of a part of that and keeping their habitat good and, and support um, you know organizations that are trying to keep uh, keep land available for our wildlife. I'm definitely on board with that. So um, so I hope you guys enjoy this video about swallowtail kite migration and I hope you guys get to see, well, I would say you get to see a swallowtail kite this year even though we're a little bit late in the season but I hope you got to see one during the summer and if not, they will be back between February and April of next spring. Thanks guys.